Hey there folks, Andrew Swan here, and this is going to be the first in a series of update videos for my AVI Synth plus QTGMC plus FFmpeg tutorial. Uh, in this particular video, I'm going to be covering how to set up FFmpeg so that you can run it from any directory on your system without having to extract out a new copy of the FFmpeg exe binary every time. And uh, I'm going to show you how to set up AVI synth in a way where you have more control over where everything is put on your computer and uh, to be able to switch between different versions of AVI synth. So to begin with, we're going to go back to the FFmpeg page. And if you don't have this already, go ahead and download the latest nightly 32-bit static linking version of FFmpeg. And go ahead and virus scan that. When that's done, go ahead and go to your downloads directory and open up the FFmpeg archive. Now, in another window, you can open up where you want to put FFmpeg. Um, I like to actually put FFmpeg in programs files x86, just because again, I'm not going to be copying too much stuff to and from this directory, and it kind of keeps it out of the way. But you can put it pretty much anywhere you want on your computer. You'll just have to sort of adjust the following steps to account for that. And I'll, I'll show you what I mean in a sec here. So for now, I'm just going to create a new directory called FFmpeg and open it up and then open up the FFmpeg folder in the archive and just copy over all of this stuff. And if you're doing it into program files, uh, you'll need to provide administrator privileges in order to do that. So, okay, once that's done, uh, go ahead and go into the bin folder and leave this window up uh, because we're going to need that in a moment. Next, go to your start menu, type run. Click on run and type the following into the open dialog box. Control space sysdm dot cpl comma comma three. Uh, anyway, when that's entered, hit OK. This will take you to your system properties on the advanced tab. From there, uh, you want to go to environment variables. And under system variables, you're going to scroll down to the path entry and click edit. Okay. So if we go back to the window where the uh, FFmpeg binary is installed, go ahead and go up to the address bar here, click on it, and go ahead and copy that address. Then go back to the edit environment variable window, click new, and paste that address in there, hit enter, click OK, 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 and you're done. Um, quick and easy way to test this is to go to the start menu, type CMD, and bring up a command prompt and just type FFmpeg. Might take a second the first time you run it, but you should get that sort of long list of options since you haven't specified anything for FFmpeg to do. And that's pretty much it. You can change to whatever directory you want. So for example, if I just go back all the way to the root directory and run FFmpeg, does the same thing. Okay, so um, the reason why you would do this is that instead of dropping that FFmpeg binary into whatever directory your video files are in, with this method, you can 
put FFmpeg in one folder, one place, and it'll work anywhere. So that will make your life a little bit easier when it comes to FFmpeg. Now, what about ABI Synth? If we go back to the ABI Synth page, you will notice that underneath the official, unofficial builds, and then ABI Synth Plus, which is what I went through in the previous tutorial, um, there's this universal installer option. So the cool thing behind this is that uh, there are some plugins that are written for ABI Synth and only work with particular versions. Uh, it's not so much the case for QTGMC because that's been updated to work with uh, the latest version of ABI Synth Plus, uh, as long as it's 32 bits. So no sort of issue there. But uh, there are some older plugins that you might want to play around with. Or if you're like me, um, you're really not a fan of the official ABI Synth Plus installer. I personally don't like the way that it just kind of drops everything into program files and doesn't give me really a lot of control over where to put my plugins directory or you know stuff like that especially because ABI Synth Plus doesn't put start menu uh, items in the install so you can't just like in the old version of ABI Synth go in and find the plugin directory easily by clicking on a start menu option. So the universal installer gets around this by essentially just being a collection of all the different copies of ABI Synth, each in their own folder with a batch file that you can run to select each of the different versions and also an option to uninstall any version that you have already installed. Uh, and because it's a batch file, you can really easily look through all of the entries in the file and see exactly what it's doing. In order to grab it, you would just go under this universal installer header and go to where it says get it here. I'll take you to a forum post on Doom 9. Um, this guy, Groucho2004, is responsible for the universal ABI synth installer. So want to give him credit where credit is due. Uh, you can see the different versions listed here, which is ABI Synth 2.5.8, 2.6.0, 2.6.1 Alpha, 2.6.0 ICL, which I actually don't know what that one is for. Um, however, ABI Synth 2.6.0 MT is the version of ABI Synth that I used to use before ABI Synth Plus. Then it has the latest 32-bit and 64-bit versions of ABI Synth Plus, and it's been pretty good about keeping up with the latest versions uh, when they've been released. It does require a little bit of setup uh, in order to work just by going into the batch file, but it is really minimal, uh, and I will show you what I mean in a sec. First, you would go to the download link, click on that, uh, go to Universal ABI Synth Installer, and grab that, virus scan it, <laughs> and then let's go and check out this archive. Okay, if you open it up, you will see that there's this folder in there called ABI Synth Repository. And within that folder, you will see all of these subfolders for the different versions of ABI Synth as well as this setavs.bat file. All right, so what you wanna do is go to a place on the computer where you want AVI Synth to be installed. I personally just go to the root directory on my OS drive, uh, just because it makes it really easy to find and I don't have to deal with permission stuff like you do in program files x86 or program files and just drag it on over wherever you want. All right, you can put in documents or pictures or wherever the heck you want. <laughs> It'll work from any of those directories as long as you follow the steps I'm about to show you, okay? Once you've extracted to where you want it, go ahead and go into the ABI Synth repository directory and right click on the setavs.bat file. 
click on edit. And uh, if you're really curious and interested, you can go and look through the batch file and see exactly what it does. In this case, it's reasonably well commented, so you can you can sort of see where things are at, uh, including sections where it installs stuff, and uh, there's an uninstall section as well. But if all you want to do is use this, then all you have to do is go where it says option one, go down to where it says set AVS underscore SRC underscore dir and then a bunch of stuff. Yeah, see that colon in front of it? Delete that colon, save the file, you're good to go. Um, if you're curious about what the difference between option one and option two is, if uh, you wanted to add this batch file to your path statement, which it kind of says here in the text for option two, and you wanted to be able to run it essentially from a different directory as a result. So option two will let you set the directory where your AVI synth repository is located, uh, and then you can run the batch file from wherever. So uh, you can also change the uh, location of the default plugin directories. But again, for this tutorial, we're gonna leave everything at stock. So, all right, once you've saved that, uh, then you're ready to start installing stuff. And just like last time, uh, I'm gonna go ahead and install AVI Synth Plus, as well as all the plugins that I need for that. The way that you do this is not by double-clicking on the batch file, though. Because if you just do that, you'll get this message. This batch file must be run with elevated privileges, so right-click on it and choose Run as Administrator. Press any key to continue. Yeah, so uh, because this batch file actually does add or remove things from both your system directories and from uh, the registry, it needs administrator permissions in order to do that. So right click on the batch file, click on run as administrator, allow the script to run when the UAC pop-up comes up, all right, and then you will see this interesting little text list here. Basically, you just need to enter a number here that corresponds to the option you want, and then hit enter, and it will run it. Uh, in this case, I will be going for AVI Synth Plus 32-bit, which in this list comes up as AVS Plus underscore x86. Uh, you may note here that it says AVI Synth X64 can be installed in addition to one of the other 32-bit versions. This is true. Um, however, at this point, I haven't really noticed a speed benefit to switching to the 64-bit version, and AVI Synth Plus has been so much more stable than older versions that um, I don't really see a need to use the 64-bit version at this point. Obviously down the road, it would probably be a good idea for all the plugins to be converted to 64-bit uh, so that they will work far enough into the future where 32-bit <laughs> support will be dropped from Windows, but we're still a long ways away from that at this point. So uh, I think you're pretty safe in just doing AVI Synth Plus, which you can do by just hitting six, enter, and done. So you might be wondering at this point, uh, where do you put your plugin files? Well, you put them in the directory of the version of AVI Synth that you've installed. So in this case, for AVI Synth plus x86, you just go into the AVS plus underscore x86 folder, the plugins folder, and you can literally just copy in all the plugins that you want to there. And that's it. Once you've done that, you've installed AVI Synth Plus. Now, if you're using this instead of the official AVI Synth Plus installer, and you want to go and do QTGMC, you do have to do that same stupid little thing where you extract out the lib FFTW3 library and rename one copy and copy over the other one and all that stuff. But 
um, for install and then for uninstall, uh, basically just run the script again and you'll see the same menu and you will notice here that options eight and nine are uninstall AVS x86 and uninstall AVS x64. That means if you install a 32-bit version of AVI Synth, you would choose eight. So it could be any of those options, one through six up above. Uh, if you install AVI Synth 64-bit, then you would use option nine to uninstall it. So in this case, I will do eight, hit enter, hit Y to confirm, and then hit enter again. And that's it, you're done. You don't even have to go into the system settings. You can install and uninstall from the same script. Uh, the one thing that I have found as kind of a little advanced thing to tack on to the end of this is that you can actually modify the batch file to copy over and uninstall uh, those FFTW3 library files as well as AVI Synth Plus by just going to the correct section of the batch file. Uh, I will post up on my website sort of a little additional explanation of how that works. But, you know, I think for most folks, you're not going to be installing and uninstalling that much. Anyway, that's pretty much it for this update video. For the next video, I will go in and take a look at some additional options for AVI Synth specifically looking at how to crop and upscale an image so that it fits within a high definition frame. And I'll be taking a look at some different ways of converting the frame rate, specifically things like running an inverse telecine filter or running one of the deprecation filters that can just drop periodic frames throughout a video. Okay, uh, until then, Thanks so much for hanging out for the rest of this video, and happy video editing.